Well, I was working on some stuff over break uh, for later on, but we are starting trig um, for this semester and not really getting into any trig functions today. What we're going to be looking at are what we call periodic functions, which you'll see in a couple of lessons, end of this week, beginning of next week, um, how this ties into our trig functions that you're familiar with because you looked at trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, and geometry, and then we did start teaching trig in Algebra 2 uh, two years ago. So those of you that were in regular Algebra 2 um, last year would have seen some trig functions as well. So um, just focus on what we call periodic functions for today. So to get us started, we have a situation. Uh, Eric, Eric, what's your uh, girlfriend's name? Okay, Eric and Maddie go to the Hamilton County Fair for their date. I know, and because it's oh so romantic, boys should take the girl on the Ferris wheel. Uh, so they go on the Ferris wheel. It has a diameter of 80 feet. So we're going to use this as our Ferris wheel. So the diameter we know is the distance through the center from one point to the other. The diameter is 80 feet. <laughs> this is a pretty quick, I think, Ferris wheel. It makes one revolution every 60 seconds. Okay, one revolution every 60 seconds. So if we get on down here, let's say, in just one minute, we'll be back to where we started. So if you get on a ground level, so we're going to kind of think of this as being ground level. This is you. This is where we're starting. What we're going to do is fill in the table with the heights of our trip, I actually am not sure if the table goes through five minutes, but it goes through several minutes. So several revolutions around um, your Ferris wheel. So what I would suggest is find the center of that Ferris wheel. And then draw in the radius. So what is uh, the length of the radius of this Ferris wheel if the diameter is 80? Okay. So what we're looking at is our height at each time interval. And we're going in 15 second time intervals. Okay. So here's what we need to think about. If one full revolution is 60 seconds, where are you on the Ferris wheel, if we're starting here, where are you on the Ferris wheel after 15 seconds? Raise your hands. Allie? No, this is the middle of the Ferris wheel. You travel. So if you're starting here at time t equals zero, where are you after 15 seconds? Oh, I should probably tell you. I should probably tell you which way you're going. That's helpful. You're going counterclockwise. Okay. <laughs> so 15 seconds going counterclockwise, where are you? Eric? Three. Yeah. So after 15 seconds, you're here. And how do you know that, Eric? Yeah, so I'm just taking that 60 second revolution, splitting it into 15 second intervals. So at t equals zero, what's my height? Zero, yeah, you can fill that in on the table. After 15 seconds, what is the height of where we are? 40, okay, we're halfway. We're halfway up from the bottom of the circle, so after 15 seconds, we are 40 feet in the air. Where are we after 30 seconds? Exactly, after 30 seconds, we're at the very tip top, we're at 80 feet.
After 45 seconds, where are we? What? 40 again, but where are we in terms of the Ferris wheel? Like, what's our location? Excuse me. I like how Eric described it as being 3 o'clock for 15 seconds. So what? So we're like at nine o'clock, so that would be again 40 feet. And then after 60 seconds, we end up where? At zero, where we started. So here's the deal. At 75 seconds, you're back to, you're back to where you were for 15 seconds. After 90 seconds, you're back to where you were at 60 seconds, or excuse me, at 30 seconds, and so on. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to have you do this with your table. I'm going to give you like three or four minutes. I want you guys to fill in the heights for the rest of these time values. Okay, so do that now. I want you to finish all of those. So all the way through 300 seconds. Like, we had some friends over in the like, I don't know. I'll take it to Lake Cranium. 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 I'll take it to and 120. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Anne Marie, what is your height at 135 seconds? 40. 150. 80. 165. 40. And 180. Zero. Okay. Are we seeing something happening here? There's kind of a pattern. So if we continue that pattern, I'd have what? 40, 80, 40, 0, 40, 80, 40, 0. Okay. So far, so good? All right. So now what we are going to do is create a little graph using those values. Okay. I tried to create a graph for you that would have nice um, scales on them. And so you can see I put 30, 60, multiples of 30 there if you want to just mark in in between where the values, the 15 multiples would be. You can do that to help you out. So take a couple minutes. I feel pretty confident that you guys can um, graph this on your own from the table. So take a couple minutes to do that.
Let me ask you this. In what manner are these points going to be connected? Are you just connecting the dots or what? How are you going to form this graph? Okay, you're on the right track. It, it, we don't really call it a parabola, but you have the idea that it's going to be a curve. Why is this a curve? And oh my gosh, let me just show you this one because it's still not even that good. But why is this a curve instead of just taking your ruler and connecting these with straight segments? has to do with what we started with. It's because it's a circle, exactly. If these were constant, you would have straight lines, but this should be a curve, okay? All right, so now what we are going to do is kind of take that example to talk about some vocabulary with periodic functions. So that graph of your Ferris wheel height is said to be periodic. Any idea why? What does it mean to be periodic based on what you saw in that table and in that graph? Okay, it happens repeatedly over time, okay? So a periodic function is a function f if its values repeat at regular intervals. Graphically, we can explain this by taking the graph of your function and just shifting it over. So we saw for example on this Ferris wheel example if you look at this first part of the graph, we can take that part of the function or part of the graph and shift it over, okay? So graphically, the graph of f is shifted horizontally by some number c units. Can somebody get the light? It's really hard to see this. Thank you. Yeah, because there's already the off. That value of C is what we call the period. And we'll look at that here on this picture in just a second. That value of C 
the amount in which we shift the graph over is the period. Take a look at this picture that I have for you. Look at this graph. So this is a periodic function. We're seeing the y values repeat over a certain amount of time. What we call the period is the amount of time it takes the graph to get, I kind of think of this as in terms of that Ferris wheel from the starting point back to that starting point. This is not labeled that I can really see, so we can't really name exactly what the period is. We'll do that in just a minute. But just understand that the period is the amount of time if we're looking at a real world situation where it takes to get from that first starting place back to that same point, okay? What we call the midline, this is a horizontal line. Between the max and min values of the function. This is the horizontal line between the maximum and the minimum values of the function. So on this example, the midline I'll go over in blue. In this case, it looks like the midline is on the x-axis. That's not always the case. But what I want you to notice is that if you look at a maximum point and a minimum point, the midline is the same distance away from that max and that min. Makes sense. It's in the middle. The midline's in the middle, okay? And then finally, what we call the amplitude is the vertical distance between the midline and the maximum or the min. It'd be the same either way. So the amplitude is from distances. Ever distances is your amplitude. So what I want us to do is to think back to that Ferris wheel example. And I want us to identify the amplitude, the period, and the midline of that Ferris wheel example. So first of all, what's the period? This is the amount of time, remember, it takes to get from the start back to the start. Raise your hand. Haley? 60 seconds, exactly. In terms of that Ferris wheel, it's essentially how long one revolution is. I wrote these a little bit out of order. It's easier to figure out the midline first and then the amplitude.
So here's what we need to think about. What is the maximum value from that Ferris wheel? 80. What was the minimum value? So what's in between? 40. That's your midline. What? No. The amplitude goes from the midline to the maximum. So if the midline was 40 and the max was 80, what's the amplitude? It's also 40. So from midline to max. All right, so what I'm going to have you guys do with your tables, and we should have time to finish all of these before lunch. Um, you have some examples on the last page. The first uh, example is looking at the tide of an ocean or water or something. Have some exam or some questions to go along with that. Then the second section, you're identifying whether or not the function is periodic, and if it is, then also identify its period. Okay, so I do want you to do all of those examples. I'll give you enough time, so go ahead and look at that now.